For our next video, we want to talk a little bit more about some of the applications of the central limit theorem. All right, so we already talked about how if, we, if our original distribution is normal and we, instead of talking about individual measurements, we talk about the means of a specific sample, that the sampling distribution, or what we have here in this kind of lighter pink color, gets narrower and taller than the original normal distribution or just distribution of the individual measurements. Uh, let's have just a little bit of, this, of a discussion of how that exactly happens. So suppose we're talking about, I don't know, men's heights or something. And on average, like in the United States, average height is like 5 feet 10, uh, which winds up being 70 inches. Okay, so that's 5 foot 10. Let's say that we're talking about, you know, somebody who's particularly tall. Let's say like, I don't know, 6 foot, uh, we'll do 6 foot 6. So that would give us up to 78 inches. And we'll suppose that the standard deviation is, I don't know, 4 inches. And so we'd say that we're up here if we hit 78. Okay. Now, when we are talking about the normal distribution, we're like, okay, what's, if this is all the people or all the men in the United States, and we were to measure their individual heights, their individual heights, we could basically make the histogram, which is kind of what this normal distribution looks like. We could make a histogram, and we could say that, you know, there are only, you know, 2% of men or something like that who are 78 inches or taller. Okay, and we, you think about all the extraordinarily tall people you know, you might know out of all the people um, that you know, unless maybe you're part of a basketball team or something, you might know one, maybe two people who are actually this tall. But by and large, the majority of your people, the people that you know, are much, much shorter. Okay, now th that's just like the probability of knowing one person. Now let's talk about this with respect to the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem would say, okay, let's say that we were just to randomly select people in the United States. What would the probability of 10 of them all being the average height of 78 inches? Now what that would require is that all 10 of your observations would be basically right here, a few taller and a few shorter. And when we take a sample of 10, that's just not likely to happen. What's actually likely to happen is, you know, most of your measurements are going to be kind of clustered like these X's and with a few that are high and low. But they're really kind of centered about the mean. It would be really rare to get 10 measurements, 10 random measurements of men in the United States where their average height was 78 inches. That'd be really tough to do. And so that's why when we're talking about the sampling mean, it gets narrower because as our sample size increases, it gets harder and harder for that sample mean uh, to deviate significantly away from this true population mean. So that's kind of how the central limit theorem works, uh, how it gets tightened down. But the next part that we're going to learn about our central limit theorem is probably the most important. So the central limit theorem does not just have to be applied to original distributions that were normal. What this means is that, let's suppose that instead of our original distribution looking normal, uh, we could have a distribution that instead was uniform. Or we could have something that was maybe bimodal, where it looks kind of like this. All right, now those aren't normally distributed. Uh, we could probably find an equation for each of those, but what about if we even had an equation that looked like this, where it was kind of like this and down, and it did that. And that's a really weird distribution. Maybe I don't even know what's, what's going on. Well, from each of these, if we took the time to figure out where the mean was, let's say it's right there on this one, right here on this one, and you know something like right here on this one. The central limit theorem also states that the sampling distribution 
will still be normally distributed as long as our sample size is large enough. So, central limit theorem, we can invoke it in two ways. Invocation number one, the, the original distribution is normal. So that's step one. The other way that we could have is that our sample size, n, is greater than or equal to 30. If we can hit this threshold of where our sample is this large, it doesn't matter what the distribution looks like. The basic shape of the sampling distribution, when we're talking about the sample mean, is going to be basically normal or approximately normal for all of these scenarios. The central limit theorem makes it like this. And this is really handy because sometimes when we're gathering data, uh, we might not know like what the original distribution is. But if we can get a sample size big enough, it doesn't matter what the original distribution actually was. We just know that, hey, as long as our sample size is big enough, and we know what like the means and the standard deviations are. We can model this, uh, this sampling distribution as a normal distribution. Uh, but if our original distribution is actually normal, we don't have a minimum sample size. We know that if the original distribution is normal, then the sampling distribution, regardless of the size, is going to be approximately normal as well.